Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I got another rant for you tonight. Before we jump in, let me thank you all for your continued support of our channel. Please continue to like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell to get up to the minute notifications when we drop our newest content. Let's just jump right on in. <clears throat> There's always a new, always a new or always an old Kaylin Clark hater to resurface to because she has to find a way to make herself important. And that newest, oldest one is the one, the only Jamel Hill. As is the case with the pooper swooper Cheryl Swoops and all the other whiny crybaby ass women who don't like Caitlin Clark. Jamel Hill is the one who panders on race, on everything. Her life story is a pandering of race. It's always racial. It's always racial. It's always racial. It can never be based on merit. It's got to always be racially motivated. <clears throat> What'd she say this time? I will show you what she said this time. Rather than tell you about it, I will show you. Here it is. The former ESPN host is arguing that the media covers white players like Caitlin Clark much more differently than they do with black players. Everything, this is the quote, everything about this sport has been trending up for years now. No, it hasn't. I looked up the attendance. The WNBA attendance has done this. There's no, it's not years up. Because in 2019, the WNBA averaged 246,000 fans. Viewers per game in 2020, it went down to 205,000. Now, granted, in 01, it went up to 306, in 02, it went up to 372, and in 2023, it went up to 505. These are facts, I give them the credit. But don't sit here, it's been going up for some upward trend for years. It's been three years, and in those three years. The average viewer for a WNBA game is still a scintilla of what the NBA is. A speck. But everything about this sport has been trending up for years now. Tell me why it's been tell me why it's been trending up. I'd love to know why. Because you still got four teams that play in buildings the size of band aid boxes. I think four, maybe it's five. Caitlin Clark hit the scene in 2023. Really, 22, because she averaged 26 points a game in 22. But she really hit the scene in 23, in the 22 23 season, not the 21 22 season. Because in the 22 23 seasons, when Sports Center started showing this unbelievable woman hitting shots from the parking lot, and that was Caitlin Clark. You could not see it. She's shooting the ball from where Steph Curry and Dame Lillard shoot the ball. We've never seen a woman do that before until we saw Caitlin Clark. Do you, do, you, do you think that that had a little bit to do with the rise of viewership in the WNBA? Absolutely. Just because she wasn't there yet doesn't mean that her impact and presence from college women's basketball to the WNBA did not have some level of impact from her appearing in women's basketball. Because all they did... During women's basketball, during February and March, they would talk about the WNBA. It's coming soon. 
Caitlin Clark still brought them a platform, whether they want to believe it or not, before she even got there. It did not just start with Caitlin Clark. A study I cited recently for a piece I wrote in The Atlantic found that when you compare the coverage of, say, someone like Paige Beckers, Sabrina Ionescu, or Caitlin Clark to Asia Wilson, who has dominated basketball every single level, she's probably the best player in the world right now, and I'm not trying to act like she gets no coverage, but the coverage that sometimes non-white women get or specifically black women get is not even close. It's two to one. What what coverage has Sabrina Ionescu gotten? What coverage has Paige Beckers gotten? Are you comparing them in college to Asia Wilson in the WNBA? Are you comparing them in college to college? Or are you comparing Sabrina in the WNBA to Asia Wilson in the WNBA? I'd like to know because you need to use a proper comparison because if you're comparing their college to college, Angel Wilson was highly recognized in college. Sabrina Ionescu was highly recognized in college. Paige Beckers has been recognized since she was in high school because she was the number one player in the country coming out of high school in the same class as Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Paige Beckers does not get the coverage of Caitlin Clark. Sabrina Ionescu does not get the coverage of Caitlin Clark. Why? Because they ain't earned it. They haven't earned that. They haven't, they don't have that cult following that Caitlin Clark has that she earned. And the coverage of the WNBA is not remotely close. To that of college women's basketball, even without Caitlin Clark. There's not a game in the WNBA that will draw what the final four in women's college basketball will draw even next year. If Caitlin Clark is not playing in that game, if the Indiana Fever are not in the WNBA finals, Those games will not draw 1 million, 1.5 million per game. They might draw a million. They might. Their high last year was like 900,000 in game four. But they won't draw a million, 1.5 million per game. They won't. And if I'm wrong, I'll come back and say I was wrong. But you know what the final four will draw next year for women's college basketball? Five, six. Seven million per game. Remember the game before Caitlin Clark last year drew seven million people. Caitlin Clark drew 14.2. And then in the finals, Caitlin Clark drew 18.6. <clears throat> but this two to one, I'd love to see where this data comes from. Because guess what? Jamel, you're part of that industry. Why aren't you a sports writer writing more and more and more and more about Asia Wilson and every star black female basketball player? Oh, I'm sorry. This is when I call a hypocrite a hypocrite. My boy Ben Daniel calls a spade a spade. I call this a hypocrite. Because you know what it took me? It took me all of five seconds to Google Jamel Hill and the Atlantic. Pull up her profile and pull up every story that she has written for the Atlantic. I don't know, in the past. You can keep scrolling, man. Scroll away. Let's see how far we can go. Okay, I can go back to October 12th of 2018. Let's count how many WNBA articles have been written about black women basketball players. Let's count them because she's a member of the establishment. 
that she's talking about. The coverage that sometimes non-white women get, or specifically black women get, it's not even close. It's two to one. What's the coverage that she speaks about? Television coverage? Media coverage? Articles written by people? Last I checked, media is media. ESPN did not cover the WNBA because the WNBA is boring. It's not exciting. It doesn't draw interest. ESPN doesn't cover these things because no one cares. First Take doesn't cover it because nobody cared. Undisputed didn't cover it. Nobody cared. Every major sports show did not cover it because nobody cared. But let's sit here. Okay. She writes an article about black men and Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court Justice. Beto O'Rourke, uh, her vote in Florida, suspended by ESPN, but we're still friends. Sometimes she wishes the Obamas wouldn't go high. R. Kelly and the cost of black protective protectionism. The war on black athletes. This is about Trump. The conversation the press isn't having. The NFL's truce with Trump wasn't worth it. Kamala Harris's blackness isn't up for debate. This is in 2019. Kaepernick won the NFL loss. Is praise in praise of selfish NFL players. This is about Antonio Brown. It hurts to see Nipsey Hussle's life not mattering. Why don't white athletes understand what's wrong with Trump? The turbulent journey of meta world peace. Have we heard about one WNBA article yet? No. Trump has killed Democrats' sense of the possible. They gave America 13 goals and got a lecture in return. This is a World Cup soccer. Megan Rapino. Kamala Harris gains mo- momentum with Democrats most. Oh my God. ESPN's back, but ESPN backs itself into a corner. I mean, Trump. The NCAA doesn't speak for college athletes. Jay-Z helped the NFL banish Colin Kaepernick. NFL players are evolving. Fans aren't keeping up. This is 2019 still. It's time for black athletes to leave white colleges. Says the woman that didn't go to a black college. I'm pretty sure Jamel Hill did not go to a black college. So maybe if she went to one, she actually could stand on that shit out of her mouth. Because... As far as I know, yeah, she went to Michigan State. So if you didn't go to a black college, realistically, Jamel, you should shut the fuck up. Who the fuck are you to tell somebody where to go when you didn't go to a black college, you stupid ass? What the right doesn't understand about black colleges. Antonio Brown has only himself to blame. Young black athletes are starting to understand their power. The NBA is going to have to choose The NCAA will never fix itself at two LeBron. The NCAA had to cut athletes a better deal. In the end, NFL proved Colin Kaepernick was right. American values were never the issue. One after the other after the other. This is a joke, right? This is the same person who's complaining about the coverage of Angel Wilson. She didn't write an article about Asia Wilson for two fucking years with Asia Wilson in the WNBA. Why didn't she do some background piece on Asia Wilson? Why didn't she do some background piece on any other black woman basketball player in the WNBA? Arike Gumbawale. Nafisa Collier. Brittany Griner. Should we... Go down the list. Jewel Lloyd. Jackie Young. John Quell Jones. Tina Charles. <clears throat> she has more articles on Kamala Harris when Kamala Harris wasn't even the fucking, wasn't even a pre, wasn't even a presidential candidate. This is still, I'm in 2020. Kamala Harris claims her power. There we go. Again, Kamala Harris. She wrote back-to-back pieces on Kamala Harris. This is in 2020. Trump attacked black athletes and paid for it. Denial isn't, I mean, there we go. 
January 11th, 2021, the WNBA cannot keep Kelly Loeffler around. She was the former co-owner of the Dream, and she said some shit, and she ended up losing the team. Okay, there you go. You got one. Why wasn't it about an actual athlete? I'm going to keep going. I mean, Simone Biles, Cam Newton, LeBron James, John Gruden, Aaron Rodgers, Enos Cantor, the NBA and NFL, Novak Djokovic, Black NFL coaches, Black NFL coaches. Okay, Brittany Griner, March 12, 2022. Yeah, where I guess she be- – I'm not going to read this shit, but I'm sure she probably believed that the U.S. should give a war criminal up for a basketball player who broke the law in another country, but I guess that's the way it goes. Um, but I guess that's what it took, is that she had to be in prison in Russia to, to write an article about her. Oh, uh, she's talking about her own abortion. Okay. Will Smith and Chris Rock, college football, Bill Russell, Serena Williams, Herschel Walker, black conservatism. Uh, Kyrie Irving, Jerry Jones, Deion Sanders, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, she seems like a very important figure in black sports. NHL, Jalen Hurts, Michigan State, Lamar Jackson. Okay, Angel Reese. This is when Angel Reese was still at LSU. This is when Angel Reese meets the same old stereotypes. This is after they won over Iowa. She gave, she gave a, 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 hum, a, a blowy to Angel Reese. So she gave, she talked about a college player before she did an article on Asia Wilson. Okay. Let's, let's remember this, Jamel. Brittany Griner again. Okay, Brittany Griner. <clears throat> Brittany Griner, I guess, after she got out of prison. Shakari Richardson, Richardson, Jada Pinkett, Jim Harbaugh, Josh Giddy. College football, Aaron. She's done more Aaron Rodgers articles than she's done stuff on WNBA players. Patrick Mahomes. Okay, okay here we go. March 18th, 2024. What Caitlin Clark's fans are missing. This is just this, to write an article about how Black women athletes have been marginalized in this sport despite their invaluable contributions. This is so sweet. So it's a way to dismiss and degrade Caitlin Clark and her fans. How many articles did you write about black women basketball players, Jamel? You wrote two about Brittany Griner. There's other black women basketball players, aren't there? You've been with the Atlantic for, for like six years, at least. Mm-hmm. Women's college basketball is a worthy investment. April 13th, 2024. The, down, the one downside of gender, gender equality in sports is June 3rd, 2024. The, the WNBA's newfound popularity has triggered a boom in commentary from men who have no idea what they're talking about. Beautiful. Except for the fact that they know basketball better than your dumbass. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know that marketing fucking matters. They don't know how to play basketball. They don't know how to talk about basketball. They just know basketball. And if they went on a court and won- played one-on-one against any one of these women in the bas, if Shaq at 50-plus years of age played one-on-one against any WNBA player, he'd mash her. Charles Barkley in his 60s would mash them. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop it. Like, yeah, Barkley accused him of being petty about Caitlin Clark. Damn right he did. He knows what he's talking about. Her last article was September 19th about Tua Tagovailoa. That is Jamel Hill in the Atlantic. 
She's a hypocrite. He is the person she speaks of. Let's take a look at the next one right here. Hmm. So frustrating when you when you read direct from dumbasses. It's such an aggravating thing to listen to. It's so aggravating. God. Here's more of this clown's commentary. She added, I mean, Aaliyah Ball, uh, uh, Asia Wilson, arguably the best player in the world, deserved more coverage than what Caitlin Clark is getting right now. Why? Why? Why did Michael Jordan deserve more coverage? Why did why did Michael Jordan get more coverage than I don't know? I don't know if he did or not, but I'm gonna presume he probably did in the 80s over over Magic and Bird at some point. He didn't win a championship. He wasn't a champion yet. He wasn't winning like they won. But he was the most popular player in the world in the 80s. And he hadn't won, he didn't win an MVP, I think, until 87 or 88 around there. Aaliyah Boston was the best college player just a couple of years ago. And she did not get even a tenth of this media coverage that Caitlin Clark did. Let me explain to you why, sweet Jamel. Aaliyah Boston is a post player who played on a loaded South Carolina basketball team, a team that was featuring 10 McDonald's All-Americans that went undefeated, oh, yeah, and lost to Caitlin Clark in the Final Four. And Aaliyah Boston isn't one scintilla of the player that Caitlin Clark is. And Aaliyah Boston doesn't have the fan base in the same universe that Caitlin Clark has. Popularity of player is determined by the fans, not by you, not by a media member. It's determined by the fan base. LeBron James has been featured on more basketball games in his career than anyone in history. He's playing for a 500 basketball team right now in the Lakers, and I would bet that the Lakers are going to be featured on national television as much or more than practically everyone in the league in 2024. LeBron James was probably featured amongst the top three or four players in the NBA as a rookie. Did you have that same opinion about him? The fact of the matter is there's better players in the NBA. So, yeah, the, the Lakers probably got featured more with Shaq and Kobe in 2003 or four or whatever it was before, before Shaq went to Miami. Then LeBron. Aaliyah Boston? Is that really what you're using? The tenth of the media coverage? She got no media coverage. She has no fan base. She has a bland, she plays a bland brand of basketball. Tell me why you don't like Rudy Gobert. I can tell you why most people don't like him. His brand of basketball is boring. He's a seven foot two stiff who can't score unless he's given the ball literally under the basket. He can't move his feet. He struggles to defend people on the perimeter. He can't make a jump shot. Should I go on and on and on? What he does well is he plays good defense around the rim. He's a great help defensive player, which is why, and his teams, when he's on the floor, play better because he protects their ass at the basket. Aaliyah Boston can't even do that. Aaliyah Boston's a 14-10 and 10 player. And you think she deserves to get more, I'm sorry, has earned the right to get more coverage when no one cares about her publicly? Stop it. <clears throat> and here you go. Now some people would say, oh, it's her game. But I don't think it was that. She's tremendous on television. And I'm thinking, what a missed opportunity for the national media to really elevate who she was as a person. Nobody cares 
who she was as a person or who she is as a person. In fact, if you want to be real, nobody cares who Caitlin Clark is as a person. How many feel-good pieces have you seen on television of Caitlin Clark? You haven't seen fuck all of them. I watch every game she plays. I haven't seen one feel-good piece on Caitlin Clark. You know what I see on Caitlin Clark? Basketball. I watch basketball. I see them show her highlights. I don't see them talk about her growth, her childhood, where she's from, her high school, her travel ball days. I don't see anything she's overcome as a player. I haven't seen any of that by anyone in media. Stop it. Stop making stuff up that doesn't fucking exist. Aaliyah Boston's person? Who gives a shit? They want to watch to see the girl play basketball. And yes, it is basketball related. Because if Caitlin Clark averaged 17 and, and 8, nobody would care. Not even in Iowa. She'd have been a good player in Iowa, and they wouldn't have made the Final Four twice in a row. And she wouldn't have led the country in scoring. And she wouldn't be the national leader in scoring in major Division I college basketball. And she wouldn't have led the, the country for three straight years in assists in women's college basketball. These comments are laughable. A tremendous opportunity, a missed opportunity to show who Aaliyah Boston was as a person. God bless. Aaliyah Boston seems like a very nice girl. Nobody cares about who she is as a person. People ain't watching the Indiana Fever to know who the hell Aaliyah Boston is as a person. You know how Aaliyah Boston can control that narrative? Guess what? Social media. She has it. Use it. You tell us about you. Sports Illustrated just put Angel Reese on the cover again and basically called her the number one of 50, the most influential of all the, of the top 50 in, in, in sports, did a whole piece on Angel Reese. And she won the number one pick in the draft. She got it. You know why she got it? Because as much as many people like her, just as many people don't like her. And you know what that does to people? It makes them buy it. One, for the people who love her to say, that's my girl. For the people who cannot stand her, they say, I can't believe SI did this bullshit. And they want to read it potentially to see how ridiculous it sounds to them. Aaliyah Boston is not a needle mover. Aaliyah Boston is uninteresting. Media does not push uninteresting. Which is why, I guess, I don't know, Jamel Hill didn't write one article on Aaliyah Boston either. Mm -hmm. How many articles you wrote about Aaliyah Boston, Jamel Hill? How many podcasts have you spoke about Aaliyah Boston's backstory, Jamel Hill? Did you ever invite her to be a guest on your podcast, Jamel Hill? I doubt it. Caitlin Clark seems to be a great personality, but it's not like Caitlin Clark is walking around saying crazy stuff. No, actually, you know what Caitlin Clark does? Caitlin Clark is endearing. She's endearing. She hasn't attacked anyone. She hasn't talked shit about anyone. She hasn't degraded anyone. She hasn't belittled anyone. You know what she's done? She's been appreciative of the fans, of the competition, of the sport, she's minimized the attacks that she's received. In fact, she doesn't even talk about them. She wished Angel Reese well in her injury, for which we all know Angel Reese could have actually played, but she chose not to. She could have attacked back at Angel Reese when Angel Reese was making comments about her this season, which she did which Angel Reese did make disparaging comments about her without saying her name, but we know who they were aimed at. Caitlin Clark does none of that. She's fun-loving. She's nice. She's not standoffish. 
it's like in all her interviews, you don't you don't ever get. Yeah, you might want to say she's fucking boring, and I've said it. Her personality is bland as a door. She's boring, and guess what? Because she's so fucking boring, you hate her even more. You probably like her more. You, Jamel Hill, if she would go off the way Angel Reese goes off in interviews. What we know is that Caitlin Clark is an intense competitor, a very intense competitor. And we know that from her history, because of things that I've seen and watched on other videos and learned about her, she hates having teammates who don't compete at the highest level. She hates having teammates who don't work as hard as she thinks they should work, as hard as she works. She has that Michael Jordan mentality, that Kobe Bryant mentality, that Mamba mentality of, you better work as hard as I work, or you're not going to get the damn ball. And the only place she has to let her freaking emotions and pissed offness at are those awful officials that she's been experiencing since she was in high school. There was an email written to Jason Whitlock by a, a viewer of his who talked about how uh, Caitlin Clark in high school and how she dealt with referees that would comp oh, constantly make calls against her just because she was that white girl. It's been going on for since she was in high school. Did you know that, Jamel Hill? Have you ever sat down to talk to Caitlin Clark, Jamel Hill? No, because you want to just disparage her. They're just covering her excellence, and that's good enough. Whereas it feels like for a black athletes to get the same amount of coverage or even fair coverage, there has to be something extra beyond basketball. No, there doesn't. No, there no no. There really doesn't. There really doesn't. There there really doesn't. You want to know? <laughs> Jamel Hill. Jamel Hill. Jamel Hill. How many ladies in the WNBA hit thirty foot threes? How many of them shoot 30 foot threes? How many of them are being defended the way this woman gets defended on a daily fucking basis? How many times does she get blitzed on double teams? Over and over and over and over again. It, it, it's, it's fucking maddening. Are you not watching the game? Angel Wilson shoots 15 to 16 foot jump shots. And most of the time, she's wide open. Caitlin Clark has to fight to take a 26 to 28 foot jump shot. She has to get banged by 10 different people. Obviously, I'm being hyperbolic. But she's banged the entire way to the lane, to the rim, when she drives to the basket. She gets hit in the back of the head making a layup, and a call is not made. And it's a clear foul. You can't miss it. Clubbed across the head. No call. And then people get mad at her because she does this. I get frustrated with her for doing it. But at what point do you start calling it? Asia Wilson gets bunnies with no coverage. Caitlin Clark has bodies draped on her damn near the entire game. Damn near the entire game. 94 feet. And she sets up everything for her team. And you're sitting here talking about basketball excellence? There's only one person who brings basketball excellence to the WNBA. Her name is Caitlin Clark. Everybody else is just good. There's no one out there that you would watch without her. How many WNBA games have you watched Jamel Hill before this year? How many? Because you sure as shit didn't write about any of these players that you're screaming about. Let me show you a, a one final thing.
because this is the shit that just gets so absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> your comment was that the league has been steadily increasing, correct? That's your comment. The league viewership has been on an increase, on a rise for years. It's only been three, but for years, according to you. I did this for a reason. Um, oh, let me zoom this in. Of the 34, 34 most viewed games in the WNBA this year. One, two, three, four, five, six. 29, 28 of the 34 most viewed WNBA games feature Caitlin Clark. Do not tell me that the media is pushing this. Don't tell me the media is pushing this. The WNBA put Caitlin Clark on television. And you know what we found out? She's the only player that anyone gives two flying fucks about watching on a consistent basis. She has the highest. Where is that? What happened there? Sorry. She has the most viewed game this year. 2.302 million against the Chicago Sky. Second most against the Chicago Sky, 2.25. Seattle Storm, 2.23. This is ESPN, CBS, ABC, ESPN2. Ion. Who the fuck knew anything about Ion? I don't even know what Ion Network was. Most people didn't. I guarantee you this 1.6 million is the most watched program that Ion Network will have in the calendar year. A women's basketball game featuring Caitlin Clark. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh Lord. 16, 17, 18, 19 games with over 1 million viewers for the Indiana Fever. You know how many games last year in the WNBA had a million viewers? Zero. The most viewed game in the WNBA last year was game four of the WNBA finals, which was about 900,000. May 14th, Indiana drew 2.12 million viewers and got blown the fuck out. Blown the fuck out. May 18th. New York Liberty, blown the fuck out, 1.71. You can't make this up, man. You can't make this up. But Jamel Hill will have you believe that the league was on a steady increase for years. The average viewership now for the WNBA this year is 1.2 million viewers. 1.2 million. That is a 100 and 500 to 1 million. It's a 100% increase. A 120% increase over last year. Because 100% would be 500,000 more. You know, they're 500 to get to get to 200%. Yeah, about 120, 130. Actually, I'm sorry, 140% increase. They have a 140% increase in the league in, a te- in viewership on TV. 28 of the 34 most viewed games are in the NF Fever games. The 14 most viewed games are in the NF Fever games. 
16 of seven, 16, 16 of 17. 17 of 18 of come on. If Caitlin Clark is not in this league right now, Jamel, the numbers this year are 550, 600. Truth. Truth because I can show it to you. You've had two games, three games that didn't feature the Indiana fever that have drawn a million viewers this year. Three. Three. Get out of here, man. You see what it is. Hypocrites talk. They don't know what they're talking about. They bitch and complain. They bitch and moan. And they're people like Jamel Hill who live their life making everything a racial conversation. It's always a racial conversation. There are too many racial conversations that really exist that are legitimate. And this one is a joke because she who just says on this damn freaking in this little bullshit she said in this whatever interview she said, this nonsense, this absolute joke where she's going to sit here and tell you the coverage when she's part of that coverage and she's written a grand total of two individual articles about WNBA players. And it was the same person twice. Miss me with it. All right. Love knowing your thoughts in the comments. Come on now, the podcast family. Let me know what you think. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. I got nothing left of this sorry ass. Come on now.